Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is June 23rd and right now we're looking at the visible satellite imagery. If you notice this, mid and some high level clouds here across portions of central California into the Sierra Nevada portions of Nevada. We're going to have some increased thunderstorm activity here across the higher terrain of the Sierra Nevada today. We'll take a look at that. We're going to take a brief look at what went on at Lake Tahoe a couple days ago and you can see the marine layer up and down the coastline as we speak right now. But if I scroll back here, I know I did this yesterday as well, but you can see the thunderstorm as they build, uh, as we go through the afternoon hours a couple days ago, and you can see that move right across Lake Tahoe. That, that cluster was so strong that it kicked off an outflow boundary right there. So if I toggle back and forth, you can kind of see that boundary moving away from the thunderstorms there. And it kicked up some very strong winds. That's what allowed those large waves to form. And, uh, you know, we capsized some boats out there and there were some deaths involved. So the first sign of this, if you're off across the back countries, you see these sharp cumulus clouds there that seem to protrude up into the atmosphere a little bit higher than you might normally see them and then you start to see these darkening skies also so if you were on lake tahoe and you were looking north and you see this batch of uh, you know darker clouds there these lowered bases that's your for you know that's probably your secondary sign actually the cumulus clouds building into the first sign but when you see that moving your way, even if you don't have thunderstorms and generally forecast for your exact location, that's your sign that you probably need to get off of the water there. Because any single thunderstorm, they don't have to be severe. They can kick up those gusty winds and just a lightning bolt can be dangerous enough as well. So uh, that's really your first indicator. Those cumulus clouds building during the afternoon, then you see those darker bases starting to move in. The wind starts to pick up. The lightning gets more intense. And of course, you get these big waves across the lake. Uh, looking at Southern California really quickly, we're going to go back to the Lake Tahoe incident here in a moment, but you can see that marine layer out there. You can see the eddy features moving around the marine layer, kind of bobbing and weaving and starting to burn back from some of the foothill locations. So if we look back two days ago, you can see where that cluster of thunderstorms was. They're just right near Lake Tahoe, but over the last 24 hours, nothing here across much of the Southwest unless you go off across New Mexico. So the Tempest weather station here, I picked a couple of these weather stations near Lake Tahoe and I checked them out and you can see the winds did pick up here. Um, when these thunderstorms did arrive and a pretty strong winds did kick up as you went through the afternoon hours and kind of scroll through here and you can see what happened on the 20th versus the 21st as well so you can kind of see that was pretty unusual as far as wind speeds are concerned you know for this location but you can really see these ramp up and those are the strong winds that help drive some of those waves across the lake and you can see that the lightning strikes you know we had hundreds of lightning strikes associated with that cluster of thunderstorms there and yeah this station picked them up quite nicely it told the distance exactly that they were away. You see some of these strikes were starting to get a bit closer there as we move through the afternoon hours as well. So yeah, if you want one of these weather stations, it might help you out. They actually build forecasts for you as well. And you can view those even on your smartphone. Now, probability of thunder Monday, again here today, we'd even argue that the chances are probably a little bit higher here for some of the thunderstorms uh, across the region here. I mean, any individual locations, probably a fairly low chance of getting some of this activity, but there are gonna be thunderstorms out there today at the Sacramento National National Weather Service and also Hanford calling attention to that as well. This is for Monday, June 23rd. It includes Yosemite, Mammoth, and B Bishop there. And it, generally wrapping up after 8 p.m. And again, if you want to be absolutely safe, wait 30 minutes until you last hear thunder. And when you see those dark skies building, if you're in a vulnerable location like around trees and whatnot, you really got to be careful if you're across some of the bigger lakes out across the region. Now, the high resolution rapid refresh, I'll put this in a motion and you can see it does show that thunderstorm activity as we go through the afternoon and the evening hours. So watch out for that again today. The good news is that we start to really reduce that amount of lightning here Tuesday and Wednesday. The herd doesn't show much for Tuesday at all. But if we show the North American model, you can see again, pretty good coverage of some of the thunderstorm activity today. We scroll off in towards Tuesday and it does show a few showers there, but again, not as strong as Monday, uh, but you can't rule out a lightning strike with that activity there as well. Well, we go through Wednesday and maybe just a shower or two. Not much to be worried about on Wednesday. But again, we'll revisit that tomorrow. Now, looking at the European model, so you can see that trough kind of hanging out here. It doesn't have too much of an effect other than just kind of suppressing temperatures here and depth of the marine layer and whatnot here for California. But as we squat off in towards the end of the week and the week, and you see that ridge build across much of the West Coast there as we go through this weekend, that's what's going to allow these temperatures to ramp back up again all the way up and down the West Coast. 
So I talked about this yesterday. This is the surface feature of the Pacific Ocean High. The Pacific Ocean is generally cooler than the land masses that surround it. You get the cooler sinking air, and that's what causes this semi-permanent feature to be out there. And then, of course, you get the stronger winds on the eastern periphery. This moves around in a clockwise rotation, and that's what drives those strong winds down the marine areas here across the state of California. And they become westerly depending on your topography and things like that as well. And you can imagine when we warm things up during the daytime, you get the lower pressure across Across the desert southwest and so this pressure gradient becomes even enhanced between the higher pressure over the pacific and the southwest that's why these winds kick up in the afternoon and the evening hours when you get the greatest heating across the interior so if i put that into motion you see that pacific high just kind of again semi-permanent feature out there but then the european artificial intelligence as we go over a week out wants to show a trough look at this a surface low kind of unusual here for this time of year but if you even with that surface low, you notice how quickly the pacific high started to rebound not as strong but it rebounds there in the wake of that of that surface low so 925 millibars, about 2,500 feet up in the atmosphere. And you, again, you can kind of see with this Pacific high and the northerly winds that turn westerly across some portions of California, almost like gears in a machine caught between the lower pressure there and that Pacific high is why we get these strong northwesterly winds. Just kind of driving home that point. A little bit of meteorology 101 there for you. Now, if we look at the artificial intelligence, we saw that trough. I'm going to scroll out here and we're looking for precipitation chances. You notice we don't see much for the state of California. Although we did do kick some off there. That's way off in the extent of forecast. We'll continue to watch for those mountainous thunderstorms there. And maybe we'll get some more of that action here as this trough digs towards the west coast of North America. You can also see this tropical system getting kind of caught up there back up towards Arizona. We'll watch for that as well. As you get later in the season, these tropical systems tend to bring more moisture and you get better chances of bringing some of that into Southern California. Now, taking a look at daily two meter max temperature, Monday, June 23rd. Here we go, some mid 90s. Look at Bakersfield, 88 degrees, not too bad out there but as we go through tuesday we're warming things up wednesday thursday friday gentle slow but oppressive climb here as we go on into the weekend look at some of these temperatures really ramping up if you want to beat the heat got to get out towards the immediate coastal areas once you get away from there towards the foothills southern california desert areas we're really ramping up these temperatures here as we go towards the early portion of next week i mean look at this las vegas 111 Sorry about that. And then you can see the coastal areas. A little bit cooler there, but look at Bakersfield 102. Some Sacramento probably up towards 100 degrees. Fresno as well. And then we go through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. No cool down in sight just yet, but we were watching that on a daily basis. There's the 6 to 10 day. No surprise there above normal conditions. And I would kind of ignore that. This was issued yesterday, but this is probably just a broad brush. Maybe they saw some of that troughing out there in the extent of forecast, but I would ignore that right now. There's really no signal for this above normal precipitation just yet but we'll see how that trough digs down here maybe it'll bring some moisture up with it who knows but uh, we're a little bit away from that getting ahead of ourselves a bit and if you want to check out dust devils i do these dust devil videos this is the greatest hits here on the pacific northwest weather watch channel uh this is probably my best work here um but yeah, go ahead and check it out. And if you know any dust devil locations there across portions of California that I may not know about, and I know there's some good ones in Nevada as well, but, but let me know and let me know what you guys see out there. You can post them on the Patreon page, post some of those images as well. But yeah, go ahead and check it out if you would. I do like making these videos and we get some pretty huge dust devils up here across portions of Washington during the summertime. So anyway, rambling on a bit here. Um, what else? Uh, Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.